That's why it's true. Time for a good story time, so I'm gonna put these guys to bed. They can go to sleep. And this has been, uh, this is gonna be a good story time because somebody. So, okay, night night, guys. You be good. Good night. Good night. So, here we go. Get ready. Get set. Please like, subscribe, pass on this passion. There has never been a more passionate passion of Christ than what I am presenting because I am who I claim to be. I am Daniel. That is my name. Daniel 12, foretold the latter day Daniel. And uh, that is me. I'm Daniel. So it was time after uh, a long day. Uh, Last Supper started at noon and they hung out most of the day. And finally, at midnight hour, it was time to leave. So it was time for the Lord to go to a private place to pray. And after communion time was over, Jesus and his remaining apostles uh, went over the brook of Cedron towards some lovely grounds at the Mount of Olives base. And as they traveled, they were blessed with pass the Passover moon being broad and full, while shining forth dingy looking as blood in uh, cloudy skies. And on their way, two scores of uh, the Lord's disciples, uh, his other disciples, not the apostles. He had 77 originally other uh, disciples, uh, according to the word of God. And they joined them not only for support, but to act as sentries as well. For the alarming hour was pretty near when Christ would soon be departing for, from our fallen world in absolute glory, brightly unseen, which the angelic realm would be uh, signifying by the triumphant sounding of many unheard trumpets sounding off. And consequently, Yeshua HaMashiach, Isa Emmanuel Jesus, he had grown exceedingly quiet because of that understanding for something real sinister most definitely was on the move. Uh, and it didn't matter that he had been to this delightful garden many other times to pray and to meditate since that evening of his last emotional agony was increasing a hundredfold within upsetting silence. And the bottom line was that Emmanuel was being beset by a splitting headache as well. And uh, back then they didn't have no uh, aspirin. And uh, since he well knew that he would have to bear all the guilt of a fallen humanity, who are his angels, John 10, we are as gods. And uh, that's what he said. Nor did any of his students fully grasp what God had meant when he spoke through the prophet Zechariah regarding his son's night of pain when he wrote, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man who is my fellow, saith the Lord. Accordingly, our Alpha King was suffering under divine justice. He saw what that meant. And as much as he uh, had to intercede to the Almighty for others, then he was longing to have an intercessor for himself. Therefore, our substitution for condemnation told all his students to console themselves and, and be not sad, seeing that he would not be feeling any tribulation whatsoever once he arose up, uh, beyond his mortal flesh. It was then about 1245 at, uh, in the morning when our willing Lamb of God finally reached the shadowy orchard of uh, Masalan at the Garden of Gethsemane with his uh, apostles, less Judas, uh, uh, along with uh, the other disciples um, who were acting as his scouts and lookouts, his sentinels. So the Lord, it was time for him to prepare his people. Now, since our proclaimer of the ages intended on having a pressing time of prayer, he stressed to all of his beloved ones that even a man of small stature always stands much taller in the Lord's eyes when he's on his knees like uh, than, uh, than any giant like Goliath uh, who only bowed down to useless idols of stone and wood. But, but beyond uh, by that point, it had also become pretty obvious that our living shelter from the rain was very sorrowful. 
and felt great heaviness starting to flood over him, for his sadness was a real weighty uh, burden to bear. And nor did that burden bearer really want to carry uh, such grief, not at all. Uh, even though he knew uh, that his disturbing load had his eternal royal name written all over it. So solitude would soon belong to Christ. Now only uh, Peter, John, and James lingered at a uh, stone's throw away from the master, for all the other apostles had spread out along with the disciples, knowing that the mountain's higher ground nearby would give them the advantage of seeing anyone in pursuit of Christ. So then Emmanuel asked his chosen three apostles to enter into some intercession uh, for the loathsome situation that was quickly unfolding all around him. And as time pressed on, it would eventually turn out that only his uh, dispersed disciples would be keeping a proper prayer vigil while encamping on the lower slopes of that garden's towering neighbor, uh, the 27,000 uh, or the 2,700 foot tall mountain, long called Mount of Olives. Not a huge mountain, but 2,000, 2,700 feet, pretty good size for uh, time would soon prove that Peter, John, and James ended up uh, becoming disobedient uh, by ignoring their watch. Neither would that be the first time that uh, some of Christ's own followers disobeyed him, nor would that be the last. For absolutely all men fall short of his utter perfection and God's brightest glory that he carried with them at all times. And it was then a real, real beautiful in that garden. It was a, a picture perfect balmy night. Even the gnarly looking olive trees were all about, they were most pleasant to any eye, for they were in full bloom under the soft lighting of that reddish crescent moon. Additionally, some beautiful wild flowers adorned that peaceful place of some subtle lurking shadows. Nor could the spotty cloud over the moon prevent it from also lighting up the groves around those three remaining uh, apostles and our Rabboni, Adonai, Mashiach. Even though those secluded rocky places within that garden's sunken grotto were pretty dark with forebodings. But it was also a pleasant season for budding lotus flowers to be all over that cove of greenery which were gray at that point because of the dark shadows all about. And those beautiful grounds not far from uh, Jeremiah's caverns were additionally a perfect place for all of those nervous students of our teacher of all. And thereabouts would Peter, James, and John meditate upon our incarnate hope's life, his mission, and his fast nearing crescendo of nearing abundant joy and uh, abundant glory that would come after. But there'd be no joy that evening, I guarantee you that. And as a part of their watchfulness for him, even the sleepiest among those followers of truth would soon come to understand deeper than ever that all wisdom comes from above and is with him forever. And their sneaking suspicions, beloved, about uh, Yeshua Jesus were also destined to to be proven true in every way, then they would uh, come to see that he would once again be able to number the sand of the sea, the drops of rain, and the days of eternity. For in his pre-existent days, never did that tailor of the ages have any problems in measuring the heights of heaven. He was the word of God as he measured the breadth of the earth and the deepest depth of any waters. But the smartest among those followers of our life overflowing would also come to realize that Christ's name was also Wisdom with a capital W, who was before all created things, and that his understanding of everything wise always existed from eternity past. So there were some real obvious conclusions just ahead. Accordingly, they would comprehend that our living word of God is the fount of wisdom as well, and that his ways are as everlasting commandments. 
nor was the lushness of Gethsemane not instantly seen, as that man from Galilee looked towards the Kindron Valley with those three apples of his eye, since that Eden-like place was surrounded by a great abundance of attractive flora and cultivated fauna. Its center, uh, in its center, though, there were only some fig trees, along with many wild growing thorns of the bushy jub-jub tree. Even the outer boundaries of uh, that peaceful retreat were decorated by nature through uh, plentiful grass, wild flowers, a rocky hillside, and uh, be plentiful boulders of all shapes and, and sizes, beloved. And uh, what a sight, what a sight to, to see. And, but when they finally went to the grotto area, Jesus was extremely down in the mouth for he knew danger was really near by the spiritual gift of knowing. So he said unto John, uh, James, and Peter, stay here, please, keep watch with me and pray so you won't enter temptation. The spirit is strong, uh, alert, and willing, but the flesh is weak. Nor should you think it strange uh, that trouble comes this way, for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And as Yeshua turned to leave them, all three of those apostles were stooping down to gather leaves and twigs so they could light a little fire to not only help in keeping them awake, but also to be a remedy against dew that was beginning to fall upon all. Then Jesus went down into the shadows of the lower grotto to pray, beloved, leaving them behind like some watchmen on the walls of a city about to be attacked for the forth forthcoming peril was very near, sent not by man, but by the uh, greatest foe of men. After all, just as God works through people, likewise, uh, emissaries of the evil one always had allowed wretched satanic power to flow uh, through lost souls, uh, unloving souls, because their dark spirits even uh, are even weaker than the frailty of their most feeble flesh. Now as Christ was leaving, the moon hanging high with her reddish light was encircling his tall figure and uh, made him seem even taller. And his pale garment looked reddish and his brownish hair blackish. And most picturesque was the Lord's silhouette against the background of an olive tree, all knots and twisted, which dangled right above a huge rock. It therefore looked like a bizarre question mark placed there by nature in order to ask some questions. But the leafy branches on uh, top of it answered the questions of the trunk, uh, at, at times saying yes by bending towards the ground, swaying in the breezes, and at times it seemed to be saying no by swinging left to right in light breeze which was blowing through the branches and the eerie darkness that was all over that place. So it was quite the... Uh, quite the time, and it was a time that our Lord needed to be supported, beloved. So uh, perhaps perhaps it was due to being tired. Jesus, all of a sudden, uh, he leaned with his back against that rock and folded his arms. And then that icon of the ages looked over towards Jerusalem uh, at a distance, and seeing uh, that, beholding his uh, emotion, swiftly became uh, became down and sadder as he whispered to himself that the city of David looked like snow. And being white unto harvest meant that Jesus was looking upon that holy city as if it were made of sin. His thoughts were racing. <laughs> Big time. And nor could that man from Galilee keep from dwelling on how many souls he had cured with in her midst and how many had spoke uh, to, uh, to those with ears. As such, our Lord couldn't help wondering where all of those souls were who had been loyal unto him. And then Yeshua Jesus lowered his head and stared at the ground covered with uh, short grass shining with dew. But while his head was bowed, it naturally became the time for Issa's long night of weeping to begin. As some of our, the master's tears fell from his face down to the ground, he raised his head, unfolded his arms, and then lifted them up again 
uh, his head up to the Almighty, unto Adonai, unto Allah, whatever you want to call him, unto his beloved love, for they are one as love. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. That is always been his name, his truest name. Great was the fast climbing emotions within Christ. It was then a most reflective time on how deeply Jesus loved mankind enough to even lay down his own life for them. He didn't have to be there in the garden awaiting his doom. He knew he could have run, ran away, and the lesser man would have. Nor could the uh, angelic witnesses watching him, the hosts all about, struggling amidst that garden's secluded fissure, hardly bear to watch our Lord of hosts being all worked up into such a physical frenzy, beloved. For his, his face was mildly contorted as he began pacing to and fro, raising his arms, uh, wringing his hands, all the while reaping, uh, weeping pretty darn hard because of the accursed kind of oppression that was causing him the most awful and painful depression of his entire life. And at that horrid time, a great mass of uh, desolation couldn't help from discouraging our overcomer of everything that evening. Nor did it, uh, nor, nor did it help uh, matters that no one was able to understand his uh, unique situation for. He knew God because uh, his image uh, had it in his power for him to walk away from all of his trials. And he was fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God because he looked right back in a mirror at him if he looked in the mirror. Not too many mirrors in those days. And deadly tribulations uh, uh, could have easily have put away. He didn't have to be scourged. And as much as our Lord of Faith tried not to dwell on it, he, he could feel his unity with his Father even seemingly breaking up, even though it really wasn't. And he was becoming afraid that in his human form he might not be able to endure the forthcoming conflict uh, with the powers of darkness, beloved. But of any thoughts that Christ was having, the one that had a huge impact on his oppression becoming full-blown depression, was the idea that the earth would remain Satan's kingdom evermore if he didn't overcome as he had always taught multitudes to do. But th that would not be the future, and he had great resolve unmoving. There, uh, so seclusion was reigning within that garden. There was also a small shallow cavern uh, below the higher grounds, some knee-deep terraces and many olive trees were to be seen in that ancient hideaway. It was therefore easy for our author of love to find a good spot thereabouts for some private meditation after forcing his uh, onslaught of tears to subside. Furthermore, it was to be the wildest part of that garden's most ignored area where Jesus went to pray amidst uh, a multitude of overgrown weeds and fern-like granary not even cultivated by the hand of man. And that, uh, that son of gloominess at that point went down the hill. I was a man of many sorrows. Under a moss-laden rock laid he in the jagged grotto uh, about 20 feet deep. And then his three apostles stayed at the top of that hilly era, area above as guardians of his most sacred light of his deity's unconditional love for absolutely all men. It was a very picturesque area since the earth sank gradually as anyone came into that rugged looking terrain of several outcrops and much lush vegetation. Even the thorny uh, jubjubs uh, trees all about added much eye appeal to that secluded and out of the way rock, rock glen. But as nice as that setting was, nothing in this world would have cheered up our chief cornerstone too much, for by that hour of his climbing agitation, the heavy anguish of our Messiah King's soul had risen to the sharp, painful point where his distress was starting to hit some very high peaks, much higher up on the scale than Mount of Olives' highest uh, peaks. It, was also, uh, it also held true because he felt like he, he was about ready to fall off some suicidal cliff uh, of no natural return. As a result, Yeshua was beginning to tremble 
all over nervously while taking refuge in that grotto to pray. He was like a wayworn uh, traveler seeking some shelter uh, in depression from a sudden storm of chaos, danger, and some incoming terror that was not really of his approval. But it was a time when Dazzle was coming and going. It was additionally a, a damp under the cave-like overhang where the Lord was because of a heavier uh, sprinkling about thereabouts the dew and light rain just 10 minutes earlier. It was brief. Uh, nor could Jesus help getting a, a bit wet as he brushed up against some beaded ivy that was hanging down from the moss-covered overhead rocks. It was therefore a sorrowful time when he would become pretty muddy <laughs> while praying amidst nature. But our increasingly relentless Lord of faith would soon find himself most disturbed as he laid prostrate under that granary while moving from side to side. And he was clasping his hands as he begged his father for whatever relief his, his will might allow him. And then our living wonder prayed ever so fervently to our Father on high, beseeching himself passionately by stressing, If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but as you would have it. And he who was sick unto death additionally said, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, let thy will be done. Now, as Emmanuel gave forth those heartfelt supplications, his prayers suddenly became a gushing floodgate where darkest thoughts of his forthcoming sufferings agonizingly began haunting him very hard. It was therefore the turbulent span for the most oppressive spiritual heaviness to hit Isa Yeshua Jesus hard, much more than he had ever experienced all throughout his life. But it was as though the realities of his fascinating pain was becoming uh, like a relentless onslaught of the ocean hitting him wave after wave. And what was hitting him wasn't too nice. And the biggest ones would soon be coming forth as the kind of a roaring emotional tidal waves that only, uh, that only a ghastly mix of some anxious feelings could possibly have brought. Nor was Jesus becoming burdened just on his own behalf, for saddened thoughts kept racing through his head about his fast approaching persecution that would end up crushing his devoted ones. So it came about, beloved, that our Lord began dwelling upon how his ardent love falling into the jaws of death would end up affecting his loved ones and how his mother couldn't help being sorrowful Moreover, Isa Yeshua Jesus also well understood and realized that Mary would be afflicted in a real extreme way due to his predestined mistreatment at the hands of some very hateful religious people. Nor was there any, anything more discontenting to him than his mother's fast approaching nightmare unfolding of her son's earthly doom, which neither she nor his followers would be able to awake from. It was going to be uh, some finality. And as he considered how devastating his nearing abuse and following demise would be to Mary, uh, Jesus remembered all the love his mom, his mother, had given unto him. Therefore, Emmanuel warmly rec recalled her every kiss, her every care, and the warm cup of her, her hands for his cold little feet when he was just an infant. He could remember back pretty young. But he also thought about the songs from her mouth, the nimbleness of her fingers on the thick locks of his hair, and her charming smile that always heated up his heart into pulsating fires of great adoration overflowing for her in love. But our distraught Lord of Evermore also tearfully reflected back on her queenly look, her silences, and her beloved words of wisdom which gave him always so much joy. And even though his love was inexhaustible, the spiritual flames of his deep burning resolve to pay the price of death for man began flickering, not in the demonic winds of double-mindedness, but in some frightening breezes of some unusual um, some usual kind of uh, human regrets. And he was having some regrets. 
But no matter what, do or die, one thing was certain within the mind of our eternal fire of God. The fiery inferno of his ignited love of flame was even then blazing away with the deepest desire for salvation of every the person calling upon him in the faith of love with their love light on so they would not perish by the everlasting, uh, unconditional, uh, uh, unforgivable sin, blaspheme of the Holy Ghost, letting your love go out. And that's the only thing that has barred anyone from ever going down the road to paradise. And in spite of his inner agonies, beloved, all throughout his emotional ordeal, Within the secluded recesses of Gethsemane's darkest shadows, he would still maintain a good attitude over all in between his tears. He well knew, uh, he was the author of Romans 8.28 uh, by his spirit because he knew that all things work together for good for those called according to God's purposes. And that is actually every single one of us. And he knew it. For nothing on earth could sway his determination to be obedient unto lifelessness. And Isa Yeshua Jesus then told himself that death should come swiftly, so by his acceptance of it he could triumph over it and gain life for all those who would otherwise be punished by death for selfish lives uh, lived with unrepentant uh, hatefulness who would perish evermore. But he, his love would turn around billions of us. So he was very resolved. And so Yeshua gave heartfelt permission for his friends to forsake him. For he knew that he alone had to enter the battle before him to gain everlasting victory for them over the forces of evil that he had created by his word, let it be. Nor did he doubt that he was the voice of the eternal, and he descended and he discerned that his voice of hope would either be caustic or caress those he spoke to. For he foresaw the last days when he would allow his roar of love herein, when addressing those being obedient. And his voice would then caress the ears of those hearing Paul's word of God. And unto those that voice of logic was always guaranteed to become like the caress of a friend. And that blessing of Jesus would always see him being as a servant to all those of love from all faiths of charity. All a man's religions as long as they have their love light on. For by his Holy Spirit the Lord had always been predestined to reach out not only to those who are religious but also unto those who aren't, even to the atheists, to the uh, meticulous moralists, to the awful loose-living immoralists, and the defeated as well, uh, all the defeated, and all those who had been demoralized, along with every other classification that a rebellious person could be put into. But regardless of his resolution to march down the ro lonely road of abandonment, forsaken all alone, the truth of the matter was that our second Isaac knew all of the history of Abraham and how he almost sacrificed the first Isaac before Father God allowed a ram stuck in the thicket to become the substitution for uh, the intended holy sacrifice for his uh, spiritual cleansing. And in that moment, Jesus smiled because he realized that if things had not ended up that way, it only would have proved the other way. It only would have proved that man loved God more than uh, God loved man. And he knew that it was that time that uh, he was committed into coming unto us as Emmanuel the first time. That put a smile on his face. But uh, it wouldn't last long. It was a sad night. Therefore, Jesus couldn't help having a small question mark in his thoughts while halfway hoping for a, a similar ending to his most ominous plight. So it was finally the most accursed hour of his death's dismal countdown, the real sad time of some wishful thinking, and the reflective moment when Emmanuel even visualized his Father of Lights standing in a great white cloud of exceedingly brightness, holding the seven thunders in his right hand, from which issued lightnings and a terrifying tempest to behold. 
and within the thoughts of Christ, with him knowing about his nearing injustice, immense torture, and the mockery of men. For a brief moment, he thought he would be, uh, it would be justified if our great I Am allowed wrathful tidings to hit the earth and to envelope the race, ball, uh, both small and great, the living and the dead, in the awful cloud of justice being poured out as rain upon all. Just, psst, that's it for them. Bzzz. He knew that would be probably deserved. And it was as clear as our Lord's lingering tears that mankind deserved to have the world's foundations shook in order to cause the darkened souls of all loose living men to quake due to the absolute terror of such rolling thunders and the foreboding sounds that come from out of the blackest of angry tempests. And for the sake of the enlightened souls of his illumination, Jesus additionally knew that he would rather see them brought to a place of serenity, though, where the lost might comprehend that the fear of the Most High is the beginning of their love flowing over to God's word, and that faith, faith is the beginning of such uh, uh, converts running after the beckoning of the Lord's light of lights. And then they could see, beloved, that he was sent by the Lord Almighty to shine as a lighthouse in a terrible storm of hatred, for it was Jesus alone who would be acting as the guiding star of the generations to help everyone to navigate towards his freedom of love that follows all those heading towards the way, the truth, and the life that he always was and as that he always directed towards love. So, beloved, wow, love from love, hope from hope. And so at this Easter time, give your uh, friends a big hug and uh, come on back to the climax. You ain't even going to believe what's next. <laughs> I don't even believe what's next. <laughs>